Hello, welcome to another Tonalist Landscape Oil Painting Demonstration. This is your painter in residence, M. Francis McCarthy. And the painting I'm bringing you today is called Country Stream. It's an 8x10. Oh my goodness, I painted this a while back. Oh, March. Back in March, about a month ago, almost not quite. <coughs> anyway, uh, it is based on a uh, pictorialist photo. And some of you may recognize, some of you uh, members that have been with me for a while. About two years ago, we did something called the Pigment Series. And this was the same, uh, the same basic uh, photo was used as reference for the Cadmium Orange demonstration. Now, for those of you that weren't there, um, that whole Pigment Series, there's a, a really cool playlist. It's a great... I think it's a great series um, because what I did was I featured each of the pigments on my palette with black and white and created a painting. Some of them came out really neat, like uh, say the alizarin crimson uh, one did, the thalo green one did surprisingly. Uh, some of them looked pretty weird like the uh, permanent green light and the cad yellow, um, but still cool, very educational. Uh, in that series, by the way, um, I kind of do a, a look up each pigment and talk a bit about its history. It, it was just a wonderful thing. Anyway, since I'd done that uh, series, I'd always thought this image had lots of um, additional potential. So it, of course, is an old um, sepia-toned pictorialist photo. It's from 19-something, you know, or even 18-something, I don't know, but uh, old. And... Um, I colorized it using a, um, a website called palette.fm and that's not uh, palette the way I'm always misspelling it. It's the correct spelling of say artist palette. And um, dot .fm and you can upload your picture there and it's got a bunch of different colorized options. It's getting better all the time I must say. Um, and it's also quite uh, quite a lot depends on the, the reference image too. Um, but uh, if you like what they uh, do, you can download a very small resolution version, or you can pay them for a high resolution version. So, recommend checking it out if you got some black and white reference you think might be cool to colorize. Um, I'm really into that sort of thing right now because one of the, um, you know, there's a lot of different uh, movements in painting, and I think as a modern painter. Um, it behooves, uh, it behooves all of us to just basically use the things we like and um, discard the things we don't like. But this is not to excuse, like, say, oh, I don't like working hard, so <laughs> I'm going to paint everything with a five-inch brush, you know. Um, yeah, okay, but that's not what I mean. I mean as far as various movements in art, you know. And... Uh, so my use of uh, pictorialism, it was running uh, very concurrent with tonalism. Of course, uh, big differences in that, you know, photos, you could only only um, render them so large, uh, the prints, right? Um, they were always going to be just sepia tone. You didn't have the full range of colors. Uh, but you, you could do things like make the whole thing a blue cast or a purple cast or whatever. Um, so, uh, and then of course, if you wanted to colorize a photo, you would uh, get your oil glazes out and just start glazing on top of it, which is a really neat idea. Um, and uh, it's a neat look, and it's one of the things that informed this painting. By the way, we just did the underpainting on some hardboard, two layers of transparent gesso, um, and the underpainting color it looks like straight up burn number. I wasn't playing much with the perylene option at that time, or maybe I was. Kind of looks like I was, to be honest. But I couldn't. You couldn't quote me. Now I, I would say in the members area, um, if I was to rewatch this uh, this video, uh, the live version, that information would be there. I would be uh, making it clear, um, and that's the beauty of the live area. I did have uh, someone on the channel the other day saying how much they preferred the. Um, the not not from my channel, but from another artist on YouTube that uh, does live more live, um, not live, excuse real time. That's, that's what I mean to say. Um, and what I pointed out is that uh, I, I actually had done a lot of real time videos, but the problem with the real time is that it's um, 
like this one I think probably I'm guessing around two and a half hours or so um, but some of these uh, seascapes I've been doing recently um, take five six hours even longer and um, it's all there in the members area uh, along with the I should say the um, the reference image uh, is being shared and a color mixing session hey um, we're gonna get into some more stuff about this painting but we got a, a quick ad for the book coming up I'm working on a third print uh, run of it and uh, but uh, they're still being signed and numbered and the third print run well that's a weird font uh, third print run uh, it's still 50 print uh, so we, we we're not talking about a massive amount of these books in existence uh, represents two years of effort on my part not not slaving every day but lots of concerted effort and uh, my uh, desire was to put everything I, I could uh, think of about landscape painting in a tonalist manner all in one book and that's what I did uh, it goes for 60 bucks and uh, that's, that's US that's maybe a little higher than I'd like to sell it but um, that has international shipping included which actually cost me more than the printing uh, which cost me plenty, let me tell you, at these low uh, print runs. Uh, so run out and get your copy today. Um, anyway, uh, you're not looking at the reference image. Uh, the, of course, the members get a gander at it. A lot more chroma in that blue. Um, I really held it back, and I'm, I'm really uh, very happy with the result of that. You know, you've got your reference image, but you need to change a lot all the time. And how, you know, the natural question there is like, well, how do I know what to change? You know, I can give you some pointers and tips, um, but since it's a case by case basis with every aspect of the reference image, um, the, the best way to learn the answer to that um, is through um, experience. And I won't go into my big, you have to paint a lot to a lecture, but you do, and we'll leave it there. Um, so this, uh, this, uh, I think this image has a really neat composition. There's a lot of challenges in it. There's like, um, these high contrast trees on our left and then everything else is kind of, um, suffused in light. Um, and, uh, I just got through it. And this is the other thing I was thinking about. Um, you know, this is representing a uh, painting number who knows? I mean, I heard the other day that uh, I was watching a, a video about uh, Bougereau, William Bougereau. It said 265 paintings in his life. You know, these are complete paintings. Of course, he had zillions of studies and drawings and all that. Um, and then Pablo Picasso, over 100,000. <laughs> so, uh, where's my, what's my count like? Uh, given that I like to work fairly small, it's probably doing pretty good. It's definitely in the thousands something you know I don't know the exact count though um, but uh, I will say that it's really interesting even after the amount of time I've been spending um, learning oil painting that there's a lot of times I'm just sitting there going well wow, I really don't know what to do <laughs> but I have a couple things that help me out like I have a process okay let's just run through it I do this is my process and you're welcome to use it. it's one of the reasons why I share the information widely on YouTube it's not proprietary um, I do an underpainting I work on a panel I tend to work not all that large so that I can get through and complete a, a fair number of paintings because I'm interested in you know doing lots of different paintings you know um, after the underpainting, I do a premix run of my colors, which I may or may not use or deviate. I may deviate from extensively. Okay, but that helps me get in the game. This, so the, the way I set things up, there's a lot of different stages where it's not do or die. It's not do or die, this underpainting stage. Most of it's going to get covered up. Some of it won't, but and things can be changed, and things do change as the color starts hitting the board, right? Um, from there, I always do the sky first. If there's a, if it's a forest scene or whatever, I do the light that's coming through the trees first, and then from there I go in and do the darkest, the darks in the landscape, where I proceed on out to meet the lights of the sky. 
this is uh, this is my approach for this countryside uh, country stream this is my approach for one of these big seascapes I've been doing this is my approach for um, just about anything I do um, not so much the figurative stuff that's a bit different that's not really a focus of this channel anyway so I won't spend a lot of time on it um, anyway um, so I have these tools at my disposal that help support my process of, of getting the art uh, painted getting it done you know that though is still always a challenge having a consistent process doesn't obviate the fact that various scenes are going to be more challenging or less challenging and there's a lot of factors it could just be the amount of uh, consciousness or awareness that i'm exhibiting that particular day right it could be um uh, the, the temperature, humidity, how the paint's flowing, it could be, uh, I'd have to say 90% of it's a mental game though, really. 90% of it is, is how, how am I doing, you know. Um, but, or luck could be a factor, or uh, the universe, God could be a factor. You know, don't, don't really know, but there's a lot of different factors at stake. The com various complexity of the reference, uh, the shapes, um, how complex is the scene, how simple is the scene. Um, uh, how did my uh, photo manipulation of that reference go? Um, did, am I spotting things? Uh, that This is the other place where experience really helps because um, you may proceed along with a bit of reference, but there'll be aspects of it that just would be very, very bad to paint the way they are in the photo. And um, a lot of times you don't, I don't even catch them until I'm sitting there painting. I'm like, oh no, this doesn't work. This will never work. And so I change it. I do something else. And uh, we have just a little time in the video. I, maybe I mentioned this uh, on the last video. If I did, I apologize. But I was um, watching this lady uh, who is a student of Odd Nerdum, you know. And she was talking about, in her training, one of her places she had gone to was the place where you do the exa exact painting copies of, plas of plaster casts. And um, that to me, 100% accurate. It's one to one. And that trains your eye in your hand, and this is how the masters taught their students, right? However, she was talking about how Odd Nerdum will, if the hands are in a certain way he doesn't like, he just changes it in his painting, right? And this is pretty valuable. It's valuable stuff, kids, you know. Shouldn't be neglected. Um, change everything and anything that you need to as you're working. And work with a framework of, of your brushwork, um, relative looseness or tightness of the image that will support these sorts of quick decisions, okay? So you can make changes and the brushwork's loose enough um, and make those changes ideally at the underpainting stage, not when you have a ton of color. Anyway, I can see we're getting pretty close to the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed watching me do this little kind of tonalist uh, country scene. Uh, leave me a comment if you did. I really appreciate the comments. And of course, uh, the Google God adores comments, you know. Um, also, uh, if you have any financial means, send me a donation or please go buy a painting. It's my absolute favorite way to be supported. Until I come back with another video for your education and enjoyment, though, do me a favor, do it solid. Take good care of yourself and your family, all your loved ones. Stay out of trouble.